In this video, Jordan Peterson talks about human development. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention, this is going, this is concentrating on Piaget as well, is, you know, we talked a little bit in the mythological and shamanic initiation lectures about the idea that human personality evolution is a punctuated upward development. So, you move ahead and then you encounter something that gets in your way, some sort of severe obstacle, and it either blocks you behaviorally so that you can't get to your goal using your current behavioral plans, or it's even more complex than that, and it disrupts the whole structure that you're using to, to integrate your behavior across time. You know, so the difference between that would roughly be the difference between, say, going home to your partner or going on a date with your partner, assuming people still do such things, uh, going out with your partner and them being in an irritable mood. And so what that would mean is that maybe you smile at them or you tell them a joke and, you know, it falls flat or they respond in an angry manner. And so you're going to orient to that. It's going to make things fall apart a little bit. You might say, oh, the whole night's ruined. You probably don't say the whole relationship has had it. But if that happens enough times, you might. But you might say, oh, the whole night's ruined. Or maybe you'll... Which is probably a bit of an overreaction right off the bat. Like my impression as a clinician is that when people are being difficult to get along with, you should let them do it three times while you track it. Because then the third time they do it, you can say, look, you've done this. Here's what you're doing. They say, no, I'm not doing that. And you say, ha, yes, you are. Because I saw you do it then and then and then. And then they're basically screwed. You win right away if you do that. So, but more, you know, more seriously, if it's just one little episode, it's best to let it go. You don't really have any proof, and maybe there's just some, you know, local thing wrong. Three times, that's a whole different issue, because then you've got some credibility. And it's a nice balance between being too impulsively reactive, you know, because you should stand up for yourself, right? Well, does that mean that you should respond to every little slight? Well, you're going to be reacting all the time if you do that. But you don't want to be a pushover and let people walk all over you. So you have to find some balance between being tolerant, so you don't have unnecessary fights, and being tough so that you don't have unnecessary fights. And three is a nice number. Anyways, so you're out with your partner and they're being annoying and, you know, you can reconstruct your behavior. Maybe instead of telling jokes, you look at your phone and let them calm down or something like that. You haven't disrupted much of the frame that you're using to interact with them, right? The night, the evening is still continuing in its planned manner. You can still use the perceptual structures and the expectations that were guiding you. They're modified at a very high resolution, minor level. And then, so that's going to upset you a little bit because you're going to think, you know, what's going on here? Maybe you'll think, is there something wrong with me? Or are you going to, if you're self-conscious, you'll do that. Or maybe you'll think that there's something wrong with them. Whatever. But it's not that serious. But then, you know, maybe you go on a... You're out with your partner and, uh, you know, some person wanders over, you're in a restaurant, some person wanders over to the table and says, uh, hello to your partner. I do, didn't know that you had a girlfriend or boyfriend. You, you know, you didn't tell me that when we went out last week. Well, that's going to be a whole different <laughs> scenario. Right, yeah, and you all laugh about that because you know perfectly well that it's a different scenario, right? And you might say, well, why is the one scenario more disrupting than the other? And the answer to that is something like, if your presuppositions about the world are arranged in a hierarchy, in a sense, so that the little actions that you take to do something are at the very bottom of the hierarchy, they're the micro details, and then you continue to abstract up all the way to the top, which might be, I'm in a committed relationship. You know, there's levels of hierarchy going from being in a committed relationship to the little <laughs> actions that you undertake with one another. The higher up, you, you have to go in the hierarchy. The higher up the disruption occurs in the hierarchical level, the more upset you're going to be. So, irritable partner, well, you can sort of walk around that. Unfaithful partner, well, you know, that's pretty much up at the top of the hierarchy where you have to start rethinking your past and your present and your future and maybe who you are and who they are and who men are and who women are and it's like, it's, a, it's really, it's a disaster, right? Everything falls apart. Well, then that's the little trip to the underworld that we talked about. Now, Piaget had an idea like that also with regards to children because his stage theory is a punctuated theory. One of the things he noted about children was that they would 
construct a structure, and a structure would be, I think again, the best way to think about it is as a personality. Because a personality has thoughts and emotions and motivations and actions. It's all of those at the same time. It's this little alive sub-element of you. And the children, children are conjuring up these little sub-elements of themselves that have functional utility as they build themselves from their, from, the, from their motor systems upwards. And now and then they run into a situation where the tools that they've built, the sub-personalities that they built, aren't fulfilling the desired function. So maybe that'll happen when, um, you know, a three-year-old goes to kindergarten and isn't making friends easily. Well, that's going to be, a child will come home after that and cry, fall apart, and maybe be angry and tell their parents, no one would play with me, and, you know, they'll break down, they'll have tears. And it, it's almost as if they switch from a domain where they're competent. Like, emotion signifies especially negative emotion, signifies that you've moved from the domain in which you're competent to the domain in which you're not competent. And if you're crying, for example, then that's often a distress signal. Sometimes it's anger. But it's often a distress signal, and it means I've, I've ended up in a situation where what I know is no longer sufficient to produce the outcomes that I desire. So you cry, and then you get help. People come and say, well, what's the matter? And they give you a little pat, and, you know, and they console you. And then maybe they help you strategize about what you could do to make the situation better, or how you could act, or if you're a smart parent, maybe you play with your child and offer them, you know, an upgrade their ability to interact socially, or you take them out on additional play dates or whatever and monitor their behavior and help them reconstruct their... Um, little sub-personality, so, and bring in more information so that it's more sophisticated. And so that would be the Piagetian... So this is a combination of the Piagetian ideas of the stage theory, which is movement upward with a punctuation. And that's the confusion, because the previous structure is no longer well adapted to the world. And then the idea of assimilation and accommodation. Now, Piaget kind of made assimilation and accommodation, in a sense, opposites. And it's, it's not exact, it's hard to figure out. But assimilation for Piaget is when you pull information in and the structure, the internal structure that you're pulling it into doesn't really have to change that much. And accommodation is when you pull in a fairly mighty piece of information, often negative, and it's so disruptive that the structure that you're using to understand the information has to be reconstructed. 